I am joined here today by goalkeeper Liam Hall and father Greg Hall. We'll start off with you, Greg. We recently announced yep. Liam's dream move to EFL League Two side Wrexham. You must be incredibly proud. Uh, exactly, yeah, exactly right. Definitely proud. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it's Liam that's that's, that's got there on his own. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, a lot of hard work gone into it. I must have made years and years and years of uh, pushing himself at you know different different squads as he's, he's worked his way through grassroots and onto obviously where he is today. But yeah, absolutely chuffed with Bixford. Um, unbelievably proud. Good to hear. And uh, Liam, how are you feeling having signed your first full time professional contract with Wrexham? Um, to be honest, yeah, I'm absolutely over the moon to just sort, uh, join a big club like Wrexham. Obviously, in the EFL, which is a very high level, and it's going to be a very, very hard season for me ahead because obviously it's something I'm not used to. But also having a very big social stance in the world, it, it'll help me a lot progress. And with obviously the heavily funded that they have, they have great coaches there, great players, and just a load to learn from. That I can't wait, obviously, for the season ahead. I'm very excited. And uh, back to you, Greg. What was it that originally made you choose, uh, made you and Liam choose to come to Bradford Park Avenue? Um, <clears throat> yeah, there was quite a few options open to Liam. Um, a lot of the clubs around the area, but I think one of the things that um, was was the original, what well, the initial push that, that obviously made him join the BPA setup was. <clears throat> he sat down with um, Tom and Bowers, uh, and it was a frank discussion that you know we can provide the tools to to to, to progress your career, uh, but ultimately it's down to you and the effort and the hard work to put in to do it. So, um, and obviously the, the guys that were starting that particular year were, were like the pathfinders of the BPA project for for the academy. Um, so it was a little bit unknown. Um, but it was, you know, the pathway was was shown, it was laid out in front of them. And I think, um, you know, the fact that, that um, they, they've, got the op they've got the option there, that, you know, if they got to a certain level, that the first team was 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 a definite chance for, for all the players if, if they were good enough. So it was, you know, nobody promised anything. Uh, there was no promises there. It was just, you know, the facility they got for training um, and the fact that, you know, he was sat in with the first team manager uh, and the director of the academy as, as, as the, the initial discussion to you know to offer Liam um, the position with Bradford Park Avenue uh, with a scholarship. Um, so yeah, that, that's really it was a sit down meeting and a frank discussion and I say absolutely no promises, saying that this is what's going to happen. It's what this is what we can offer, but it, ultimately it's down to the player um, and, and like Liam himself to to prove what he can do. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was a chance. <laughs> uh, and uh, Liam, how long have you known about Rexham's interest, and uh, how long has it taken to get the deal done? I think it was really the last two seasons that I've been at BPA. Obviously, with the scholars, we played in the Alliance League, the National Alliance League, and obviously the first year we saw that Wrexham were in it, and it was our I think second third game of the season, and our first year scholar there. And uh, the game we obviously I think we lost four or five one, but. In the game itself, I made 20 or 30 saves, I must say. It was a tough game. And then we played them again the second game and played brilliant again, to be honest. But the, I think the interest mostly came from the season that's just gone, um, where we just came short of the title. We played Wrexham at the beginning of the season near that and we beat them 1-0, obviously. I, I think I really played real, really well in that. And Dan Nolan, the, uh, the manager of the U team at the time, came over to me. And they were just saying how really brilliant of a keeper was that game and that uh, I'll make it far. And obviously at that time, I thought there must be a bit of interest. But towards the end of the season where we was running for the title against Wrexham and we needed to beat Wrexham in our fight, one of our final games. And I think uh, I made a few saves in the first half and second half that denied them the win and we got the win. And from that, I think Dan Nolan just saw again the potential I had, maybe, which is what he told me. And he spoke to me after the game, obviously, what I'm doing next year and at BPA. And I still had a year left on my contracts at that point. And then he obviously gave me his phone number and I gave him a message, obviously, what's happening. And from there, uh, I spoke to my agent and it all just got done so quickly out of nowhere. Uh, they just rang me up and 
said that they were very interested in me over the last two seasons that I've been in that they'd like me to come in for a trial. And I think I've been in there for a month now, so it's taken quite a while, to be fair, but it was all worthwhile. And yeah, after this month, I got the deal done and couldn't be happier, really. Yeah. Um, who would you say was the worst dresser or singer in the first team? Uh, I think, to be honest, I've got no comment to that. Um, but there were plenty of dodgy people there, I must say, but I won't name names because I'll get slated myself for my dress sense from a few of the lads. And, uh, who, uh, how do you think you have developed as a player over the last two to three seasons with us? Um, I think massively, massively. I've developed massively. Um, just working under very good coaches at the club, like Bowers, Bosch and Danny, uh, who have helped me progress massively uh, as a player and as a man myself, um, mentally, mentally and physically. Because uh, at first team, it's very physically high demanding um, against the players that I had work, uh, played with there, like Jacob Blythe, who there is maybe six foot five and he's very big and strong. So I had to live up uh, to playing against him in some training sessions where I'd go up for a cross and I'd get absolutely just pushed over by him by a slight of a touch. So I think there I knew myself I had to work massively on my physical strength. And obviously at a first team level, senior football team stakes are very costly. So then as a player and as a goalkeeper, I had to realise that I had to work on maybe some of my passing, uh, some of my decision making, which had to be very precise, because in a few moments, in the blink of a second, uh, it, the the game changes just like that. Maybe a bad pass, and they might score. So, I think I knew myself I had to work massively on a lot of things, and with the help of Bowers and Bosch and Danny King, who helped me progress and tell me things and gave me advice, I think it helped me a lot in my career and just helped me get to where I am at this point. And uh, you also mentioned him a bit, but uh, you've worked with Danny King um, in his coaching, goalkeeper coaching academy. Um, how has working with him been on a day-to-day basis? Oh, it's been a pleasure, really. Uh, just loved every minute with him. I've, I've known him for quite a while. I used to, as a little kid, I think maybe five or six to ten, I worked him in, uh, with him uh, a goalkeeping coaching like academy. So I knew him, obviously before and we clicked instantly and I listened to everything he said and everything he said was very, very helpful Um, because he's been in the game himself for a very long time. He used to be a pro at Barnsley, obviously, so he knew what he was talking about and I knew instantly that I had to take in what he was saying. And I think without him, I wouldn't be, as I say with Bowers and Bosch, wouldn't be where I am today without their help and I wouldn't be the man I am today. And yeah, I've got to thank him a lot for what he's done for me over the past few years. And uh, do you feel that training and being part of the first team environment at BP has helped your development as well? Oh, yeah, massively. Just, just like I said, all, all the mistake you made, mistakes you made are very costly and your decision-making has got to be precise. So I think, obviously, when I knew I had to work on that and I did improve on that, then the game just became easier and I, I fit in more and I got used to it. And then from there, I just progressed a lot more and working with the players that were there they were also giving me advice especially George Hatz Kenworthy who probably one of the best goalkeepers I've ever seen in my opinion uh, very talented and very consistent as a keeper so just watching him even though I was on the bench and not happy to be on the bench but being able to watch him in a game and just understand what I have to do in certain situations and even in training as well from the advice he gave me just learn new stuff that I would have never learned before from him. And uh, yeah, just helps me, ma- helps me massively. Uh, what do you think the impact of moving has had on your move taking place? Um, I think over the last two years, it just it had all the staffs and coaches that were behind it to help me progress. And there were many there, like Pat Maguire, Andy Cooper, Tom McStravick, obviously at the academy. They had belief in me that I'd make it to a high level and I'd be a very good first team player, which helped my confidence a lot. And I think a coach is someone that helps the player massively on the on in the career. They may be technically good, but you need that confidence to to know that you are that good and to play that good. So I think with the coaching back uh, behind me, backing me, and helping me along my journey, including Bowers and Bosch, I think it's impacted me 
massively and helped me move up uh, and better into my career. Obviously, now I've got to Wrexham. I think it's I've got to give them credit for a lot of the stuff that they've done for me. And uh, you also appeared in the County Cup against Brighouse Town. Could you tell us more about that experience? Oh, yeah, it was an unbelievable game, I must say. To obviously play against a very decent team, it was a tough game. Uh, they put one of their best teams out, I'd say, out when we were speaking to them. And uh, the, the team that we had were all scholars. There were 14 or 15 scholars. So I think at the point when the game came up, uh, we were, we are a very good team. We were all close and good friends. So we knew we'd connect instantly in the game and that passing and teamwork, everything would be very good because we were so close together. But um, I think going against such a tough side, uh, we had to glue together and stick together in games, whether whoever made a mistake, we had to pat them on the back and just say, come on next time, you, you can do better. And I think I think it was a very good game. Obviously, to lose on penalties is, is very, very annoying, but in a whole, the game of the 90 minutes that we played, we played very well. To go 1-0 up and stick it out to the end, to where they just scored past me, obviously a bit gutting, but uh, I was very proud, proud of the boys that I was working with at the Scholars, and that I couldn't have asked for, really for a better team to play with. And uh, we'll now go back to you, Greg. How do you feel the club has helped Liam's develop into a first team player since joining? Um, I think it, it's getting the basics right. I mean, obviously Liam, Liam being a goalkeeper, um, it's. It's sometimes, I mean, I, I, I did grassroots goalkeeper coaching. It's, it's always difficult to find a, um, a club that, that can support and develop goalkeepers as well as, as well as obviously clubs that struggle to get, to get keeper coaches in. But obviously having Danny King um, as part of the first team and first team coaching, it's a massive bonus for, for any keeper coming in to have that um, access to that sort of coaching. Um, so that really sort of, that can really help a goalkeeper. Uh, they obviously get developed by the, Day to day football um, coaching that they get, but obviously the, the specifics within goalkeeping that, that you need to fine tune. And I think, I say, having having the uh, having Danny King as a coach on site, it's, it's been you know worth its weight in gold for Liam to, to develop him as a keeper. Uh, how would you describe the club's communication with you as a parent? Yeah, it, it's it's pretty good. I mean, it's pretty it's well explained up front. So you know, we we had. Meetings with with uh, Tom and the coaching staff there. They explain what how it was all going to be put together, what was happening. As I said, these guys were the in Liam's group were the first group coming through on the new new sort of scholarship program. Um, so yeah, there's been little hiccups on the way and stuff like that. But but generally, it's it's, it's been it's been pretty good. Um, you know, the, the communication with with, with obviously the, the education side as well as. Um, the football side as well, it's it's all well, well laid out. And, uh, could you tell us a bit more about the facilities at Bradford Park? Yeah, well, obviously, since I've been watching Liam uh, when we started, obviously, at the beginning of the scholarship, you know, the the pitch is great. Um, you know, it's one of the one of the massive bonuses of, of being part of the, the the setup at Bradford Park Avenue is, is the facilities that you've got. The, the ultimate is the pitch that you're playing on. Uh, you know, it's pretty much second to none. Um, but obviously, with the development of the new um, sort of part of the clubhouse and the change rooms and all that sort of facility, it, it, it really does help. I mean, ultimately, it's about what goes on on the pitch. And, you know, there's there's not many games get knocked on the head at BPA for, for bad weather and muddy pitches. You know, they've got a state-of-the-art pitch, and, it, and it's really good. It's really good. And uh, Liam has been at the BPA Academy for the last two years. What was it like watching him progress as a parent? Um. I can remember watching the first away game. I think it was Charlie that played. Uh, there was me and a couple of other parents there. And, um, yeah, we, we, a bit of a baptism by fire, really. I, I think they got, we got, they got beat quite heavily. So it was a good, it was good. It was yeah, fortunate for me to be able to see that first game um, that they played as the first year scholars. And obviously watch, I actually watched the last, last Wrexham game that they played away at Wrexham. Um, and to see where they'd start from and where they were finishing off on the second year of the scholarship, it was just, Unbelievable, you know, they've gone from a team that had just started out in football, um, were at the, at the bottom end of the league, and then by the second year, we're, we're, we're you know, fighting for, for, to win it, to win the league. It's just slightly unfortunate that they, they didn't win it. 
Um, but yeah, it was it was to see them progress from where they start from, then two years later, see where they finished up. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Um, could you tell us more about Liam's experience with the academy and first team coaches here, Avenue? Um, yeah, I think I mean Liam's one of them one of them lads that he gets on well with people. Um, so I think the fact is, the fact that he's gone on well with them, um, you know, he's I, I can only get feedback. It's the feedback that I hear, and, and obviously the feedback that he, you know he conducts himself pretty professional around the. The training facility when he's when he's with the first team in the academy, um, you know I think I think where he's today shows that you know he's been committed all the way through that. Um, but as I say, his experience I think he's got everything he can out of the academy, um, and the first team yeah it, it would have been nice to see him play more games in the first team. And obviously he's up against George, but you know he's I think that 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 alone has just kept Liam hungry for it. You know he's always trying to chase George and. Um, that's what's progressed him to where he is today. Uh, finally, for you, Greg, can you tell us something about Liam that our fans wouldn't know? Uh, I didn't read that last question, so uh, the only thing that jumps to mind is probably don't know he's a Leeds fan. <laughs> Go back to you now, Liam. Uh, well, how do you think you will benefit from training with a full-time EFL team? Oh. Massively, I think obviously the club itself, uh, looking at from on a uh, social media, massively, um, because the way it is, and obviously environmentals came in as the owners, obviously it was heavily funded. It would allow for more staff and better staff to come in, especially uh, the gaffer Phil Parkinson. Obviously, I'm I'm learning under already. Um, he's got massive, massive uh, amounts of experiences experience in the uh, EFL in the championship and all and it's just to uh, learn from him would help me massively um, but obviously the players that came in that have come in from the team Elliot Lee Paul Mullin all of them to go up against them obviously they're top players and they're very very elite uh, and saying shooting drills or a match uh, it, they're very hard to compete against very hard to save their shots so I think over time I'll I'll adapt to it and I'll get better and then it goes on from there. But also it's very physically and uh, mentally demanding over there um, in the EFL, which obviously I've got to learn to deal with. And obviously over time, as I said, everything will get better and I'll get better myself. But mostly the the keepers there, um, Mark Howard, Rob Linton and Luke McNicholas, obviously Ben Foster has retired who in the short amount of time I have learned quite quite a lot from. But uh, the experience that they have, Mark Howard, Rob Lane, and in the EFL as well, is very high. And I learn a lot from them in training. A lot of new things that I never knew before, just small basics that can help me progress. And uh, Luke McNicholas, he obviously you were at Sligo Rovers, if that's how you say it, in Ireland. And he was a starter at just 23. And even he has a lot of experience in the first team senior environment uh, a professional club and just to learn small things off them that might I not know just helps me progress massively um, and behind all the players and the coaches, the staff there the gym work that they provide for me the food, everything behind it will just help me progress massively as it's very high quality and yeah, I just couldn't ask for a better club to be at really and I uh... How do you see your career progressing from here onwards? Well, for me and my mentality, I do think only upwards from this moment and I'll only go for upwards. Obviously, I'll work as hard as I can day in, day out at training. Hopefully, one day that allows me to get a chance at Wrexham, whether it's with the first team and the 23s, uh, impressing the gaffer there. And really, just got to keep that mentality of being patient and just waiting for my chance and just keep working hard in training. And one day that opportunity will arise. And when it does arise, I'll have to take the opportunity and make it my own. And hopefully I do that. And I'm just going to now be patient and wait. A final question. Could you give us some of your favourite moments from the academy or the first team? Um, oh, there's, there's so many I could name from. Um, I think the first one that I ever gained was uh, beating Emily in the FA Youth Cup. On penalties, obviously we had a good game. It was 3-3 and 
came down to penalties and the lads fairly did well on the penalties and then it came to the last one and I had to save it to win it. And I think in that moment, I sp- <laughs> there's a video of me and Seb Bolton that were talking and he believed in me and I think that gave me a lot of confidence just to do it for the boys. Obviously, we were uh, out in that game and I saved it, which obviously we went into the next round, unfortunately, to lose. But even winning just the one game was a very good memory. Um, another one is making my debut at the club. I think we was losing heavily, but just to play uh, on that pitch uh, with the fans there, I think was a very proud moment for myself to show how far I've come. And obviously, I kept a clean sheet, which is even better. Um and just making friends for life there, really. I made uh, people that just came in and came out and that I could call my best friends, maybe they're there um, uh, for life, yeah. Uh, and, yeah, just training day in, day out with the Skulls and the first team. I think just it were a pleasure to be there and every session was fun and enjoyable, uh, especially with Danny and George. I think every session you'll see us smiling and laughing. Probably not not just at anything, but just at me because I'm a bit of a dork in the sessions. But no, I think everything about there, just all, all the memories I created there was just amazing. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.